So welcome to the first video interview of AI talent in Japan. So Appier is really excited to know many innovations happening in the AI society in Japan. And that greatly motivates us to interview AI talents and get more people to know about their story, their background, and what they're going to do for the society in the future. So today, it is our great pleasure to have Professor Sigiyama, who is a full professor from University of Tokyo, as well as the director of Riken AIP Center. So, Professor Sigiyama, um, I know that um, we're all working in the AI community, and also Professor Xuan Tianling, who is the chief AI, uh, chief data scientist in App here, also know you for quite a long time. Um, and I heard about a story that uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, very few people, including you and Xuan Tian, are attending to top conferences such as NIPS, ICML from the Asian mm -hmm. side. So um, today I really wanted to know about what gets you guys started doing machine learning research and what mm -hmm. is it about, about doing research in machine learning 10 years ago? Oh. So actually, I started my machine learning research about 20 years ago oh, when I was a master's ago. student. Wow. It's really a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But I'm basically doing the same thing for 20 years. So I started machine learning research, basically fundamental research. Mm -hmm. And I'm still keep doing the same thing. That sounds, that uh, sounds great. But as you said, so Asia is like not that I say, active in terms of machine learning research right. 20 years ago and even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So Shantin is one of the kind of few Asian researchers mm -hmm. in the community and we got to know each other quite easily. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. So things have changed a lot, right, for the top conferences. Yeah, at least the number is really growing. Yeah. So I, I did a program chair for New Rips conference ah. in 2015, mm -hmm. so already four years ago. Mm -hmm. At that moment, already the number was quite large. But even after that, the number of participants is really growing. And now it's amazingly a huge conference. Yeah, I heard last year was more than 8,000 8, attendees. Ah. And maybe 20 years ago, it's just a few hundred people. I think so, yeah. Yeah, and that's really amazing mm -hmm. progress. Right, so I think uh, after 20 years of core machine learning research, uh, you, have, you must have seen and also contribute to a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us about what is the latest research that makes you exciting mm -hmm. for your future directions? Yeah. So nowadays, so deep learning and big data are clearly two important topics. Mm -hmm. And of course, for some applications, we can really get nice big data. And we can really apply deep learning and right. like amazing superhuman performance for some problems. But on the other hand, if you see other applications like medical domains mm -hmm. or like material science right. or robotics, okay, we can't really get you know, big data easily, in particular right. label data. Mm -hmm. So then a natural challenge is so whether we can really use latest machine learning mm -hmm. technology with that kind of like limited data scenario. Right. So that's our current challenge. And we call the problem like weekly supervised machine learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So usual machine learning is supervised learning, right. so we, we need label data, but in weekly supervised learning, we try to reduce the kind of amount of supervision that mm -hmm. we need to use for training a learning machine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that, that's a core challenge for us nowadays. I see, I see. I think uh, Sugiyama sensei pointed out a very important facts. I mean, nowadays, most audience see superhuman performance in AI domain, but it really are basically relying on supervised learning with yeah. a large number of label data. And I, I guess label data sometimes is very costly. Mm -hmm. And in some applications such as robotic, it's really hard to label the correct yeah. label, right? So can you mention some key results that happened in this domain mm -hmm. lately? So ideally, our, our final goal is to train a neural network with a small number of label data. Mm -hmm. But this is like mathematically not really possible, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. we know already st statistical uh, limitation. Right. So then we need something many, mm -hmm. but we hope that these many data points are not fully supervised, but they could be just weakly supervised mm -hmm. cheap data. Mm -hmm. A typical example is, let's, let's, let's consider a binary classification problem. Right. Yeah, right. We want to classify a sample into either a positive class or negative <coughs> class. Right. Then in, in the standard case, we need both positive data and right. negative data to train a classifier. Mm -hmm. But a situation called positive unlabeled learning, or PU learning in mm -hmm. short. So we only use positive data and unlabeled data. 
without using any single negative data. Mm. We have already shown that, also other researchers are showing that, so without negative data, so PU learning is really possible. Only mm. from positive and unreliable data, we mm. can really try and classify uh, to separate positives and negatives. Oh, so that's the kind of start of our like, weekly supervised machine learning research. Mm -hmm. So then based on that, we are kind of extending that idea to many possible scenarios, like only learning from positive confidence data, mm -hmm. or learning from two sets of unbelievable data, mm -hmm. or things like that. So I see. we are kind of trying to reduce the amount of supervision we need, to, we need for training a classifier. Mm -hmm. So for the new PU learning results, um, did you guys uh, empirically analyze it or you also propose some statistical bound that shows that yeah. PU so learning can we, we do both. So, do both. so our best, best direction is to really have theoretical support for mm. any machine learning algorithms. So all the methods we have developed so far have certain kind of uh, theoretical guarantee, like mm -hmm. generalization error upper bound and things mm -hmm. like that. And the method do apply to both deep neural network as well as other learning methods? Yeah, so, so far almost all results are kind of model agnostic. So ah, we can I apply see. our like, learning method mm -hmm. to like, either linear model or kernel model or mm -hmm. deep model or mm -hmm. even maybe recurrent neural networks. I see, I see. So the result is really very general. Yeah. Uh, because it's model agnostic. Uh, it could be using different applications yeah. in whatever model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in that sense, um, can you uh, make an example domain or area uh, that could uh, already like quickly benefit from this PU learning scenario? Yeah, like at our weekend center, so mm -hmm. we are working on some medical applications, oh. or material science, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in those areas, we can't really get data easily. Mm -hmm. Then almost all applications are actually targets of weekly supervised machine learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, I see, and I, I could kind of imagine in the macro domains. Um, if you want to have labels, that typically means you need to have a doctor mm -hmm. sitting down labeling this is a positive example or a negative example. Uh -huh. And um, uh, I can imagine it's going to be very costly. Yeah. Right, right. But right. in some scenarios, maybe negative data can be collected almost for free. Mm. Then, from our, from our viewpoint, that, that's already enough for training a classifier. Mm -hmm. So, if I go deeper to think about the medical use case, does that mean in the future we could expect doctor only need to label a few positive examples? Mm -hmm. And as long as we have machine that digitalize people's health condition at the large scale, we mm -hmm. will have a set of unlabeled data. Is that something we should imagine? So will happen in that case, in the okay, small number of positive data and large number of unlabeled data. Mm -hmm. And so far, actually, we, we need also many positive data. Ah, I see. So P and U should be many, but I no see. negative data. I see. But I see, of I course, see. it depends on the problem. We may further reduce the amount of positive data I in see. the future. I see. I see. I see. So, but but I guess luckily. In the medical domain, we already start digitalizing a lot of health records yeah. and uh, images. So uh, all we need is to kind of combine the database. We should be able to extract a large number of uh, positive data yeah. in this case. Well, that sounds great. That means um, uh, the technology could be really beneficial for the medical diagnosis mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in the near future. Yeah. I see, I see. So uh, that, that sounds great. So, um, um, so thank you for putting a lot of effort in, in making research uh, progress in this direction. Um, the other topic I want to also discuss with you today mm -hmm. is about uh, how can we cultivate more AI talent in Japan for the future? because uh, I believe the AI technology people will, will be more persuasive, pervasive in multiple different domains. Mm -hmm. So different areas really need more experts. Yeah. What do you think about uh, what, what should we do to have new future AI talents to yeah. serve the community? So thank you very much for raising yeah. this topic. So right. this is really important for mm -hmm. our community. Right. In particular, in Japan, we have a let's say, a large number of master students who are studying computer mm -hmm. science, machine right. learning. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. almost all of them go to industry after finishing their master's study. Oh. So that means we only have a small number of PhD students, mm -hmm. and a small number of postdocs. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm running a center at Riken now, right. but hiring like, Japanese postdocs is almost impossible. 
because oh. we don't have candidate in the pool anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe this is the first point we need to really you know change. Mm -hmm. So of course it's natural that many students go to industry. Right. Also we should have a certain number of PhD students in the community. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, right. so far in Japan, the you know importance of getting PhD was not so pronounced strongly. Mm. Right, like, right. Uh, having a job after finishing the master's study mm -hmm. was more natural and I uh, see. better sometimes. Mm -hmm. But this is actually changing now. Mm -hmm. and in many IT companies, so right. PhD, having PhD becomes really important nowadays. Mm -hmm. and the younger students started to know that nowadays. Right. Then they are more motivated to come to PhD and mm -hmm. do more like, deep research when mm -hmm. you are still students, when they are still students. Mm -hmm. I think it's an important observation and a similar observation we also observe in Taiwan. Oh, yeah. Um, and and uh, I, I mean, I think master students with AI training definitely have some skill, but maybe they are best at uh, getting some low-hanging fruits mm -hmm. and implementing system. Mm. But in terms of uh, tackling a hard challenge and make real progress, what can widely be used in that domain, we do need people uh, devoting their time for a PhD study mm. for three to five years. Um, one thing I observe um, in the US is IT company or any company actually has PhD fellowships mm -hmm. like um, to sponsor PhD students and uh, once the students receive those fellowships they naturally get an internship opportunity. Yeah. Um, have you observed something like that in the uh, Japan community? Yeah, like, uh, like American companies are like, coming to Japan and oh. get some PhD students from mm -hmm. Japan. Like mm -hmm. uh, Some of my students are also doing okay. that, that kind of internship. But mm -hmm. that's Actually, th that can be applied to only uh, applied by only by PhD students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in the case of Japan, mm -hmm. like many master students are not really coming to PhD. Ah. So then, actually, we need some fellowship for master students to mm -hmm. come to PhD. Ah. So we need uh, I mean, one or two year area. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, students don't really come to PhD. Oh, so the fellowship should extend to master. So they yeah, can... or, uh, promising master student to support when they come to a PhD. Oh, so that's more effective. I see, I see, I see. Right at the beginning when a master student kind of contemplating if the, he wants to pursue a PhD, mm -hmm. the, should, the information of such fellowship should already be available. Yeah. For them. I see, I see. Well, if they, they can apply for that kind of fellowship when they are still master students, mm -hmm. then they stop doing job hunting and decide to come to a PhD, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, I see, I see. That sounds good, yeah. So uh, another question I have related to cultivating AI talents is, um, uh, is more broader. I mean, um, in one way, we definitely need people who develop AI. But I could imagine also in the future, a lot of AI solution or system being available, and people also need to use the AI systems. Yeah. Um, uh, in that sense, we also need to train people how to use the AI system right. to get, at least get some knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, do you think either the university side or the uh, private sector or your center, uh, what is your point of view of how to, how to kind of get some basic training for general people mm -hmm. to know AI? Okay, so uh, at our weekend center, right. we have researchers. Right. Maybe you are just cultivating like machine learning experts, AI right. researchers there. Right, right. Maybe weekend is maybe we should put more it aside. The, yeah, yeah, more research oriented. Right, right. Then uh, as a university professor, like, like at the University of Tokyo, we have many different disciplines, including mm. like, literature, right. law school, mm -hmm. medical school, mm -hmm. engineering school. Mm -hmm. So then basically everybody needs machine learning nowadays. Right. Right, right. So then, th that's clearly the job of universities to mm -hmm. like, educate maybe all students wow. to be familiar with machine learning techniques. So you're seeing some uh, student probably from the law department or from different departments start to have interest to attending a, a basic machine learning class. Yeah, right. Like, like, for example, my lecture consists right. of really students from all different departments at the University of Tokyo. Oh, it's I surprising see. actually. I see, I uh, see. And do they need to program the homework or? <laughs> yeah, that's actually a big challenge for us. Like, like we need to prepare something more introductory to those I students. See. 
I see. Because my course is done in like, computer science. Then ah. we need to be somewhat professional. Mm -hmm. So then maybe that, that's too hard for like students. Right, not, right. Not from computer science. Yeah. If they, at the end of the day, they are the user, uh, rather than developer, probably they don't need to be very uh, uh, proficient at programming, but as long as they understand the basic concept. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. At least this is not, right, this is not the basic concept. Like mm -hmm. Even in, like, in, the, in the business field, they need right. to know the kind of taste of machine learning AI. Right, right, then right. For almost all engineers, they need to maybe program and maybe use AI tools in, in their own research or mm -hmm, business. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and get to know more the fundamental basic of AI. I think uh, one thing also will be good is to be able to know what's the current limitations of AI mm -mm -mm. so they do not make um, uh, too aggressive assumption extrapolations. Uh -huh. um, and also connecting to some people uh, very resourceful like you will be able to know the latest progress mm -mm. and um, for example, um, if the weekly supervised learning keep on progressing as uh, the current trend you mentioned, uh -huh. I could see that will be the second uh, critical uh, technology that make AI more widely applicable yeah. in many, many different domains. And for the business owner who uh, be aware of this uh, progress, will be the first people to jump in and use available systems mm -hmm. and tools to, to, to kind of conquer the yeah. next business domain. Right? Okay, yeah. Cool. So uh, I think um, uh, that's pretty much for um, today's uh, interview. Mm -hmm. And um, it's so glad to have you today um, that we know about the amazing progress in uh, PU learning or more broadly weekly supervised learning mm -hmm. as well as we discussed about how to calculate, uh, cal cal cultivate uh, experts in AI and also uh, how to educate general public people mm -hmm. as a user of AI. And um, well, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, so, let me check it out. Yeah. <laughs>